Absalom, Absalom, Absalom. That is who we're going to look at today. David's son, Absalom. I've been studying in 2 Samuel and recently read chapter 15. And it really is all about David's son, Absalom. Maybe you've never heard of Absalom. Uh, David had many sons, one of which, obviously, is named Absalom. Absalom, th things to know about him, he is a person in the scriptures who you really never want to be likened to. You never want anyone walking up to you and saying, wow, you are such an Absalom, right? Like there are some people in scripture who it is a massive compliment to be likened to them. Like David, honestly, Absalom's dad. Somebody comes up to you and says, man, you are such a David. That is a massive compliment. David is literally, scripture says, is a man after God's own heart. Um, if somebody calls you an apostle Paul, massive compliment. Someone calls you a Timothy, huge compliment. Someone calls you a Peter, might be a compliment. It's like, which part of Peter's life are you referring to right now? Somebody calls you an Absalom, it is never a compliment. Absalom is not a good guy. Something you should note about Absalom, Absalom is a very pretty man, extremely good looking on the outside, but terrifyingly ugly on the inside. Really good looking on the outside. I mean, the Bible even talks about how he would let his hair grow and once a year he would cut it. Um, his hair is immaculate. He is an immaculate man. But though he is very pretty on the outside, he's pretty ugly on the inside. And it is never a compliment to be likened to Absalom. And today I want to look at Absalom because in 2 Samuel 15, we find Absalom doing something that I think many people in the body of Christ, and even those particularly in charge of leading the body of Christ, find themselves doing. Real quickly, before we dive into the scripture, I want to kind of break down for you what is happening here in 2 Samuel 15. Obviously, David, Absalom's dad, is the king over all of Israel. And people would come to have their requests, their uh, situations, their complaints, their causes heard by the king. And evidently, um, people aren't getting seen as fast as they would like. David isn't quote unquote, making enough time for them. Uh, they really wish that it was a little easier to get their situations heard by the king. And really the, what is implied here is that even what would be said of their situation, they don't like the way their situation is being judged. Like they don't like the way David's handling it. So in light of this, David's son Absalom positions himself outside the court and he's sitting there and as people are coming up to the court to be have their situation heard, their cause heard, to have a, a judgment made of what ought to be done, that money ought to be given to them, restitution ought to be made, their neighbors ought to be evicted, something like that. Absalom sees that they're upset and he begins to, to do something. And I want to point out to you what Absalom does here. Second Samuel chapter 15, we'll start reading. At verse three, it says this, Absalom would say to these people, see, your claims are good and right, but there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Verse four, then Absalom would say this, oh, that I were judge in the land. Then every man with a dispute or cause might come to me and I would give him Justice. Verse five says this, and whenever a man came near to pay homage to him, Absalom would put his hand, put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Verse six, notice this, thus Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. So here in this moment, as I've already laid out for you, people are coming because they want David or David's judges to make a judgment about what's going on in their life. They've got a situation, they're in a predicament, they have something they would like done, and evidently they aren't getting seen fast enough. That's why Absalom says, no one's here to hear you. And you notice what Absalom does. He says, your cause is good and right. He's saying, hey, I've, I've, I've got a judgment. My judgment 
I know you haven't even heard the king's judgment, but my judgment is that you're all good. My judgment is that the thing you want, yeah, that's the right thing. And then notice what he does. He begins to say, oh, that I, oh, if I were the judge in the land, I would make sure that you got justice. I would make sure that your cause, your problems, your predicament, the things you want, I would make sure there was space for that. But dang it, like Absalom's whole thing here is like, dang it, like you got stuck with my dad, kind of sucks, right? Like, but if I were in charge, like if I were king, if, 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 I, if, if I had it my way, like dang it, we have David, but if I had it my way, trust me, man, things would be different. Like I get it. And I see so many people, listen to me, this is where I wanna go and this is why I think it's so pertinent for you and I today in 2024, or whatever year it is you are watching this, I think it is so important that you and I understand what Absalom's doing here because what I see happening is so many people of God are Absaloming God. Absaloming is not a word, but here in the context, you get what I'm saying. What Absalom did to David, so many people are doing to the Lord entrusted to speak into the Lord's people. And when God doesn't do it the way the people think he ought to do it, or when God's standards in scripture are clearly against whatever they would like to do, people come in and say, oh, I know, I get why you would want to be, you know, maybe they would say this, I I get why you would want to be in a same-sex relationship. I, I, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with it, but you know, God says like, you know, it's not something he'll bless. God says it's, it's an abomination is actually what the scriptures say, an abomination, not just something he won't bless. It's an abomination before him. Or maybe in all honesty, if I can just very, get very straightforward with this, we've got the transgender issue. And maybe people are tempted to say to people struggling with transgenderism, You know, oh, I get, you know, I get that you don't feel at home in your body. I get that you think you're a woman when, you know, on your birth certificate, it says you're a male. I get that. Like, I I get it. Like, I believe you. But unfortunately, you know, scriptures say what they what they say. And, you know, God didn't consult me. Had God. That's the attitude we get. Had God consulted me, I would have said there's a better way to do this we begin to act like our way is better than the way of the Lord. That like, oh, had God consulted me, I would have said, why male and female? Why not like a third option? And we begin to undermine the knowledge, wisdom, and integrity of the king. That's exactly what Absalom's doing here. He is undermining the wisdom, knowledge, and integrity of King David. And notice what happens as Absalom says, hey, you're good, you're right, but dang it. (laughs) According to me, I I think you're good. I think you're right. But we got, sadly, we got David. He says this, he stole the hearts of the people. And we are seeing, listen to me, we are seeing where people are becoming more loyal to certain men and women of God than they are God himself. This is why when a pastor falls, you watch people to a man or woman of God. And I'm not acting like that's not a catastrophe. I'm not acting like that's not horrible. I'm not acting like it's okay. Like we should all just rub some faith in it and move on. But when your faith is more attached to a man or woman of God than it is to actually God himself, you have been Absalomed or you are Absaloming the people. Because notice it says in that moment, Absalom began to steal the hearts of, of the people from David and turn them towards himself. The spirit of Absalom out of pride, listen to me, that's what we're talking about here. The spirit of Absalom out of pride will say, hey, you know what, if my ways are better. My, my, My theology, I know like Orthodox Christianity says one thing and we've said that one thing for you know thousands of years and Christians decade upon decade upon decade upon decade upon decade upon de- centuries ago believed these things but you know my take my theolo- my theological nuances the way I read the scriptures it's more in favor of 
what you want. Your claims are good. Your claims are right. And dang it, if we didn't have old David, it might be better for you. We are in danger of becoming an Absalom when we undermine the truth of the word of God. When we act like this is not the best idea for humanity, when we act like, yeah, this, these are some antiquated, old, dusty ideas that probably worked really well when they were first written, but they have not kept up with the times. Listen to me, that's the amazing thing about truth. It does not need to keep up with the times. The times need to keep up with the truth. And anytime our time, our day, our age does not keep up with the truth, we will find ourselves exactly where every other person in time and space who ignored the truth found themselves. We will find ourselves in calamity. Our empire will fall. It will implode. It will crumble. We will come to ruin. Famine will hit the land. And listen to me, God will make sure of it. Because we forget that authority, according to the Bible, all authority is instituted by God. All authority, not just the authority you like, not just the authority that jives with you, not just the authority you can get along with and you can get behind. I'm talking all authority is ordained by God according to the scriptures. Now, I'm not saying that all authority is godly. I am not saying that. I am not saying that every authoritative figure or every person who finds himself in authority acts godly all the time. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is all authority is given by God. Listen, sometimes God allows corrupt authority to take place in order that he might judge people. You don't believe me? Go and read this book. Over and over, you will find that sometimes God allows Israel to conquer a nation in order to judge that nation. God uses Israel to judge them. And then sometimes Israel backslides. So God allows a pagan nation to conquer Israel in order that he might judge Israel. This happens over and over and over. What I'm trying to get you to understand is all authority is given by God. And the Absalom spirit hates authority. The Absalom spirit is constantly trying to undermine, ultimately, not just man's authority, not just the man of God's authority, pastoral authority. I'm not just talking about that. An Absalom spirit ultimately wants to undermine the authority of this book undermine the authority of the word of God. And you and I, even when it would not put us in right standing with man, even when it's not going to win people over, even when it's not gonna give somebody a goosebump, here's what a lot of people do. They just go to the parts of the scriptures that give people the goosebumps and the pat on the back and they skip over the parts that want to be a, a bit of a cutting rebuke. They skip over the parts where Jesus uses the serrated edge, if you will like the jagged edge where it's like, hey, that, that cuts and it cuts deep. We skip over those parts because we, you know, we're, we're of the spirit of Absalom. And let me tell you where the spirit of Absalom will lead you. It leads you right where it led Absalom. I told you Absalom's, one of his big things is his vanity. He's an extremely good looking man. And he would let his hair grow long. And what the scriptures say is as he began to take over the kingdom, because it happened, People began to follow Absalom rather than David. David refuses to touch Absalom because he says, hey, if this is God, I don't want to get in the way of it. God brought me into power. If God wants to, he can take me out of power. That's the heart of David. The heart of Absalom says, I'm taking the, I'm taking the power whether you like it or not. And Absalom begins, begins to try to take power. And as he's riding in a chariot led by some horses, he goes under a tree and his hair gets stuck in the tree. Do you see the irony of this? His hair gets stuck in the tree. The thing he had so much vanity around, pride around, gets stuck in the tree and he's hanging by his hair in a tree. This is 2 Samuel 18. Hanging by his hair in a tree and some of David's men find him hanging there and they throw javelins into his heart and then they come and they stab him and he dies and they bury him with rocks. That's where the spirit of Absalom leads you. Maybe you'll see a moment of victory. You begin to win the hearts of people, but ultimately... Pride cometh before a fall. And the spirit of Absalom is a spirit of pride. And even it looks like this, you begin to think you're more loving than God. That's the spirit of Absalom. That's a spirit of pride. You begin to think I'm more empathetic and I'm more loving than God. Like God has all these tyrannical rules. God has all these like restrictions. I would just say, have at it. 
Like that, that, that sort of mentality is a pride based mentality. It's of the spirit of Absalom. And listen to me, each and every single one of us have to wake up every single day and put to death the Absalom in all of us. I don't want to be pretty on the outside and ugly on the inside, undermining the authority of the king. I want to submit to the authority of the king and watch God do what only God can do. And that's raise me up. I know you want the same thing. I pray this blessed you.